answer that, there would be no more public economics field. Um, this is definitely a quite, quite complex topic. It is more about for each of these type of taxes that we have actually improving the way they're levied. And it's not necessarily about taxing more, depends on the context, but really about taxing better. Uh, all of these taxes have a lot of inefficiency embedded in them currently. And so I mentioned a few related to general tax enforcement or multinational companies or on the taxation of capital. And so I think that is, that is something unambiguous that we can say uh, to improve that. Uh, Mateus, I mean, we, we, we saw uh, Jeff Bezos push back uh, against President Biden's uh, connection of taxation and inflation. Um, does the fact that we're now seeing these conversations played out in the public domain suggest that actually uh, any legislation in the United States that puts higher taxes on billionaires is dead, it, is dead in the water? Well, look, I mean, I, I think debates on taxation uh, are not uh, new. Uh, they've always, it's always been thus, and they've always been uh, a central part of the political uh, discourse. Um, I mean, what I, what I would say, clearly governments need to be able to raise uh, the necessary revenue to fund the public services uh, their populations require and expect. Um, I, ideally, they should do so in a way that is uh, most efficient, least distorting in the economy, and is fair and equitable. Uh, the question then is how can you, you know, how, how can you have the Goldilocks approach to taxation that gives you uh, taxes that are uh, as most efficient, least distorting, and fair and equitable, and seen as being fair and equitable. And and look, um, you know, as far as wealth taxes uh, are concerned, I mean I, we haven't seen a, a huge uh, history of success on the efficiency and least distorting front uh, when it comes to those. I mean, they're inevitably uh, difficult to administer uh, and don't necessarily raise um, uh, that much revenue, is, is the evidence. It's true that on the perceived fairness and equity front, and in terms of the politics of it, it's, it's, it's sort of attractive. But in terms of what it actually achieves in substance, it's, it's, not, it's not that attractive. What we would say from an OECD point of view, if, if you really want to have the most efficient, least distorting way of, um, I, I guess, um, taxing wealth, property taxes are probably uh, the most efficient, least distorting way to do so. Uh, but um, a, a pure wealth tax, I mean the, the his, I mean, the history around the world is that they're not necessarily an, a, a, a successful way of achieving the objective, the intended objective. Yeah, so I think we, we are calling this WEF a, a turning point in history, and we are in, in so many crises happening at the same time. I think as humanity, we haven't experienced that. So we are in a moment of really having to use our imagination to the maximum. And, and what has worked or not worked in the past, we, we need to really think. And, and what billionaires have wanted or not to do, you know, at the moment we're talking about, you know, the, the survival of, the, of, of, our, of our humanity in, in the planet. So you can accumulate as much wealth as you want, but if everything um, ends around you, then, then it doesn't make much sense. So in our report out yesterday, we, we, talked, we called it profiting from pain. The two years of the pandemic have been you know, really um, a bonanza for, for lots of billionaires. And um, there's been a new billionaire every 30 hours in, in the last two years. And now in 2022, around 1 million people are falling into extreme poverty in, at the same rate mm -hmm. because of um, still the pandemic effects, the conflict in Ukraine, of course, inflation, everything that we know, hunger. The effects of climate are visible. So I was in Somalia uh, six weeks ago. And, you know, there are people who are used to, to coping with very, very tough conditions, but the level of impact of these droughts now are breaking all the coping mechanisms. And, and we could see hundreds of thousands of people dying. At the moment, people are dying one person every 48 seconds in Somalia, Kenya, and Ethiopia, the Horn of Africa. So this is unfortunately only the beginning of that uh, because we're not raising enough money. The, the UN has launched an appeal for six billion. Uh, only 10% is funded. We have Yemen, Syria, the Sahel, Afghanistan. All these places are in hunger crisis and it's growing. So we really need to move and, and mobilize resources and whether it's the heart or the brain needs to be moved to, to think of where, and, and as I said, there's huge scope in wealth taxation. It's difficult, it's been tried, and in some countries it, is, it works and small percentages make huge difference. So we